What's up, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of The Sit Down. As always, if you enjoy this video, please make sure you hit the like button and let me know what you think of today's discussion in the comment section below. If you're new around here, you just haven't done it yet, or you're living under a rock and seeing this video for the first time, I don't know what you're waiting for. Hit that subscribe button below now so you never miss another sit down video today, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to get into another very interesting organized crime topic. And over the last two years on this channel, I've taken the job of telling you all about the very interesting father-son duo in the mafia. Over the years, we have seen countless family members follow other family members into the American mafia. The most notable dynasty, though, that we remember from mob lore it's probably the Gotti family. John Sr. and four of his brothers followed him into the life. Several of their sons would be involved as well. We've also seen families like the Gigantes. Vincent at the top, his brothers, nephews, the Persicos. We've seen a lot of different family dynasties in the mafia. Today, we are going to talk about another one, a lesser known one but one that has been involved in all sorts of infamous things, including recently with a member of the Real Housewives of New Jersey. The very interesting story of the Pernas of New Jersey. Next on Sit Down Shorts. Now, I am going to start a little bit different today. This is coming with a disclaimer, folks. There are a lot of Pernas that are involved with the mafia. So I'm going to do my best to differentiate all of them and give you a clean ending to all of them. Most of them are still alive. Most of them are still active. So I'm going to do my best. And I understand there's a lot of Ralphs and Michaels and Johns and Joey. So just understand, turn your volumes up, pay attention. A little note at the beginning. We're going to start the proceedings here with Ralph Perna. At this point, it's safe to say Ralph Perna is the patriarch of the Perna family. Now, the Pernas essentially are a group of individuals from New Jersey that for years have been connected to the Lucchese crime family. Like many crime families, whether it's the Gambinos or the Genovese or the Lucchese, all five families have maintained some sort of interest in North New Jersey. They've always had a footing there. New Jersey's always dominated a lot of the waterfront. A lot of these families have been very involved with bookmaking. New Jersey goes back deep. Now, remember, there is a New Jersey family called the DeCalvacantes. Today, though, we're talking about the Pernas, who are part of the Lucchese crime family. Now, Ralph Perna had a brother called Michael Perna. Now, the Perna's father... He was the real patriarch of the family, was a person called Big Joe Perna. Back in the 60s, Big Joe was a huge bookmaker, huge. And this is something that the Pernas have followed in their father and grandfather's footsteps. These guys have been big bookmakers for a long time, and that all started with Big Joe Perna. He was a bookmaker back in the 60s, and he was based out of the down neck section of Newark, New Jersey. If you're familiar with the show, The Sopranos, in season one and several other seasons, Down Neck is referenced quite frequently. In fact, in season one, there's an episode titled Down Neck. Down Neck was where Tony Soprano's father was from, where he grew up. The Pernas have had a foothold in Down Neck for a while. Now, the Pernas have been closely affiliated with Michael Mad Dog Tachetta. Now, Tachetta it is said that they are related blood-wise as well. It's said that they are cousins, the Teixeiras and the Pernas. Uh, and they have had a Shakespearean connection for a long time. Back in the 80s, the New Jersey faction of the Lucchese crime family was led by Anthony Tumac Asaturo. Eventually, Asaturo goes away. And Michael Mad Dog Teixeira takes over. In 1988. Now, the problem that he had was he was embroiled in all sorts of things, whether it was murder, conspiracies, bookmaking. Him and Michael Perna were 
really the leaders of the New Jersey faction of the Lucchese crime family. In 1993, both Tachetta and Michael Perna received 25 years in prison for their involvement in racketeering, murder conspiracies, all sorts of different things. Okay, and this takes on a different level because as we know, these families have to institute new leaders. We're going to get back to the Pernas. Just stand by. I just want to give you a little history here. Mad Dog Tachetta goes away. The next person that takes over the New Jersey faction is an individual called Robert Caravaggio, a.k.a. Bucky the Boss. He takes over for a short time between essentially the mid to late 90s. He goes away in 2003, to which Johnny Hooks Capra takes over. Now, during all of this, Ralph Perna is a soldier in the Lucchese crime family. He's continuing to make book. He's based out of Belleville, New Jersey. Eventually, Johnny Hooks Capra goes away, and a familiar face takes over in 2005. Nicodemo Nicky Scarfo Jr. is made capo of the New Jersey crew and essentially the leader of the Lucchese faction of New Jersey. Now, this is something that takes on history of its own. At one point, Nicky Scarfo Jr.'s father, little Nicky Scarfo, in prison becomes closely affiliated with Vic Amuso. In the 90s, Nicky Scarfo Jr. is banished from the family after an attempt is made on his life. He flees to New Jersey. And through Amuso's connections to his father, Nicky Scarfo Sr., Nicky Scarfo Jr. is made a member of the Lucchese family. He spends a lot of the 90s in New Jersey, in prison. He then takes over the family in 05. They have a real problem with leadership at this point. People are dying. People are going to prison. Nicky Scarfo assumes the mantle in 2005. Now, this is where the Pernas arrive themselves back into the fold. Now, during the early 2000s, Ralph Perna is becoming more and more boisterous in the family. He becomes very involved at one point with Maddie Madonna and Joe DiNapoli and the Lucchese family. They're both making their way to the top of the family as well. A lot of the inner circle of the Lucchese's by this point is fractured, right? You know, Stephen Crea is up in the Bronx. Maddie Madonna is up in the Bronx. Uh, but Miglior, he's kind of out of the picture now. There's a real problem with leadership in the Lucchese family and to Ralph Perna. In and around 2007, it's made clear through wiretaps that Nicky Scarfo Jr. has been demoted. Okay. In fact, at one point, um, it is talked about in wiretaps uh, where uh, John and Joey Perna are talking very openly on wiretap that they're laughing that. Daddy's now taken over uh, in reference to their father. Ralph Pern has made a lot of friends in the Lucchese family. And he, for years, has been a loyal soldier in the family. He has a good bookmaking business. He's made a lot of money. He's kicked up. He's done what he's had to do. And Ralph Pern had paid his dues. Remember, he had been a member of the uh, Tachetta Michael Perna crew for a long time. He's been around the mob for a long time. He has the bloodlines as well. His father was involved. So Ralph Perna had paid his dues, and he was now the leader of the New Jersey faction of the Lucchese crime family. In November of 2007, it would be made clear through wiretaps that John and Joey Perna had now become members of the Lucchese crime family as well. Now, during this time, in and around the mid-2000s to late-2000s, um, it had become abundantly clear that the New Jersey faction of the Lucchese crime family was making millions of dollars in the bookmaking world. And what we would find out is they had wire rooms based in Costa Rica that were coming up with the times and becoming essentially internet-based bookmaking rackets. I'm going to give a little background of how this all worked. People like Ralph, John, and Joey Perna were the leaders of this group. But what the feds in New Jer Jersey were saying was they had hundreds and thousands of bettors that were betting in through websites, right? These fake websites that are made up. They're these uh, goofy, like, 
bet123.com, a person logs in with a password and username, and they're able to bet, just like any bookmaking website is now. The difference between them and a you know Barstool Sportsbook is that one's illegal and based in Costa Rica. And these individuals pay companies to act as wire rooms, and that's where all this stuff goes down. It was alleged that just during a one to two month period through one gambler, they were betting millions of dollars through this book. These guys are making hundreds of millions of wagers through a one, two, three year period. This group was making a lot of money. Uh, and by 2010, um, these guys were in a lot of trouble because in 07, the state of New Jersey indicts not only Ralph, John, and Joey Perna, but they also indict the brother of Michael Teixeira, Martin Teixeira, as well as Maddie Madonna and other individuals. And this is a huge bookmaking case. Now, what the feds would also allege in this indictment by 2010 is that Joey Perna is involved in some other very nefarious things as well. Now, we'll get into what would ultimately happen with this, but they would also essentially say that Joey Perna had become involved with an individual called Edward, or sorry, Edwin Spears. Now, the feds allege that he is part of the Nine Trey Gangsters Blood Street Gang. They would say that through emissaries, Joey Perna was buying cocaine, funneling it to Spears, also with cell phones, and they were selling it throughout New Jersey state prisons. Now, I want to make it clear, according to ganglandnews.com, Joey Perna told Capisci straight up, quote, this charge was nonsense, alleging that there was no violence and that this was essentially just a gambling case. Perna would tell Capisci, quote, no one got hurt. This was gambling, nothing more. So he's saying that this whole thing with the nine trade gangsters never happened. Okay. But if you look back to the original indictment in 2010, Perna's wife was actually named in this case involved with doing some of the accounting in all of this. Now, ultimately, and I'll talk about what would happen with this case, those charges would be thrown out, the whole involvement with the Blood Street Gang. And ultimately for Joey, John, Ralph, all the Pernas, they would all plead guilty in this case. Ralph Perna would get eight years in state prison. John and Joey Perna would be hit with a 10-year state prison sentence. Maddie Madonna would get five years, but that really wouldn't matter because Maddie Madonna would, as we know, be hit with the Michael Meldish case, and he is serving life in prison. So five years mean nothing to him. Now, Ralph Perna would get out in the late 2010s. I'm going to kind of put a bow on each of these individuals. Ralph Perna, we haven't heard much from since. It is still alleged that he is the capo regime of the New Jersey faction and the leader of the New Jersey faction, the Lucchese crime family. I will say, happy birthday. It is Ralph Perna's birthday today, April 15th, 1946. I will say that I don't know that he'll watch this, but I do want to say a happy birthday. Maybe his sons will watch it. They can pass uh, the message along to Ralph Perna. Now, the story does not stop with John and Joey Perna. I do want to talk about the fact that this case for them, the whole bookmaking case, really was a problem because people like Joey Perna made it pretty easy. I mean, in wiretap conversations, Joey Perna would discuss his gambling business. And he, alongside Matty Madonna, would basically say uh, their involvement in this business and that Madonna would say that he was involved in about 25% of the gambling business. Now it was also discussed and alleged through uh, surveillance that regularly Madonna would be spotted at the golden Eagle diner in the Bronx to which John and Joey Perna were delivering him tribute payments on a weekly and monthly basis. Now Joey Perna also had other problems because in wiretap conversations um, he would discuss that, you know, he had one point quote made sixty seven thousand dollars in ten days. Um, he bought a seven hundred thousand dollar home in Wyckoff, New Jersey, as well as a summer home in Tom's River, New Jersey. 
And it was also made clear that in a two-year period, Joe Perna made cash deposits at the bank worth nearly $330,000, but that he and his wife claimed just $64,000 to the government. So Joey Perna made it pretty easy for people to be indicted in this case. Remember, if you were going to claim and show $330,000, your taxes should probably show that as well. So if you're going to make all this money and you're going to buy these big homes and these vacation properties, you probably shouldn't claim just $64,000. It's always going to be easy for them to go back and look at that sort of thing. So everybody got a prison sentence in this case. It is clear, though, that this story does not end. I will say Joey Perna would actually be released in 2019. We haven't heard much from him since. He was, though, spotted in an interesting picture with uh, alleged Philadelphia mobster Joey Merlino. And if you watch John Panisi's YouTube channel, Sit Down News, I'd recommend checking that out. He has discussed Perna on several bases, including a video he did where he says that he, alongside Merlino, uh, Joe Perna, and their wives and girlfriends went to uh, a steakhouse in Brooklyn. Uh, Peter Luger's, and he talks about a pretty interesting story. So it is pretty clear that Joey Molino and Joe Perna are friends. Um, but I want to revert back to this story because this story takes a wild turn. I told you guys, this Perna group is interesting. Um, I want to talk about um, kind of another leg of this story involving this individual, Thomas Manzo. Now, if that name Manzo is familiar uh, with people watching this, it's because it is. Uh, Tom Manzo is the former husband of Dina Manzo. Dina Manzo would be seen on the first two seasons and then sprinkled into other seasons of the Real Housewives of New Jersey, something that has taken a huge cult following in this country and is still being produced today. Dina Manzo uh, would essentially separate from Tom Manzo in 2012, and by 2014, she would begin shacking up with a person called David Canton. Now, David Canton made millions of dollars in the automotive business and at one point was involved with a huge Hyundai dealership. From what I understand, David Canton is a gem of an individual, actually. Um, and it would be actually found that in 2011, David Canton had leukemia. And he would battle the next four years with ultimately beating the disease in 2015. But during that time, he had to engage in some really sickening things at the hands of Tom Manzo. Now, this will come back to the Pernas. Trust me. What we would learn that after Tom Manzo found out that his wife was shacking up at David Canton, he became obsessed with stalking his ex-wife. And, you know, he did some really sickening things, quite frankly. At one point, he began very much trying to intimidate uh, Mr. Canton. At one point, according to Gangland News, he would stoop so low that he dispatched a private investigator to scout out a Little League baseball game of David Canton's eight-year-old in an attempt to find David Canton. It was also alleged that he threw websites like binverified.com, looked into David Canton's past 300 or so times. Tom Manzo was obsessed with silencing David Canton, and he would do nothing to stop it. It is important to realize that Tom Manzo is the owner and proprietor of this wedding venue, a place called Brownstone in Patterson, New Jersey. Now, he is kind of coming up to dead ends with stopping the relationship between his ex-wife and David Canton. So what he does is he enlists his longtime friend, John Perna, to deal with David Canton. What he tells Perna is, hey, look, I know you are looking to have a wedding. You have about 300 guests. I will give you a very much discounted wedding at the Brownstone if you assault David Canton. That's exactly what John Perna did. In July of 2015 in Totoa, New Jersey, 
John Perna spots David Canton in a strip mall. John Perna, alongside another individual armed with a slapjack, assault David Canton. Now, the beating was quite bit vicious. Now, remember, according to the timeline, David Canton had leukemia at this time. He's beaten up. John Perna would ultimately be arrested, and alongside the other charges he got in the bookmaking case, would get 30 months in federal prison added on to the 10 years that he got for his involvement in the bookmaking case. John Perna is currently incarcerated at the Federal Correctional Institution at Raybrook and is scheduled for release in February of 2024. Now, the story does not stop for Tom Manzo. Tom Manzo is again furious that this relationship involving his ex-wife and Canton continues, and he does not stop. He eventually would enlist James Jimmy Balls Mayanello to also assault David Canton. Now, this is all what the state alleges because this case is still pending. But according to the Canton, uh, David Canton and uh, Dina Manzo, they would say that in May of 2013, they arrived home that evening from a first Holy Communion. As soon as they entered their townhouse, an unknown suspect, according to Canton, lunged at him, hitting him in the leg, knee, arm, face, and back with a baseball bat. Now, Canton claimed that he quickly realized there were two masked assailants in their home in Holmdale, New Jersey. He would then see a second suspect push his wife, Dina, against a wall, cover her mouth, throwing her to the floor and kicking her. He then, the assailant, pulled off her engagement ring off her finger and said, quote, that's what you get for fucking with a guy from Patterson. Now, the attacker's face, according to Canton, was covered with bandanas and they were wearing hats. But the Can Canton was able to describe the attacker with the baseball bat as, quote, 5'10", with a thin to medium build. Now, Canton would say that they were then struck several more times with a baseball bat and that Manzo would be punched multiple times. They were then zip-tied together and the assailants fled. Now, the state of New Jersey contends that one of the attackers was Jimmy Balls Maniello. Maniello was at one point a burglar and involved with home invasions in the early 2000s. Now, the lawyer for Maniello claims that this is completely false and that the attacker was much taller and there's no way that it could have been his uh, client. Ultimately, in 2021, Thomas Manzo would be indicted for his involvement in this case as well. This is now two different cases that Mr. Manzo was involved in, according to the state of New Jersey. Now, his lawyer vehemently de uh, declines and says that this is not something that his client was involved in, but it's clear that Tom Manzo is a major problem. He's obviously obsessed with his ex-wife. Now, it really didn't matter because... According to multiple reports, in June of 2017, without a hitch, Dave and Dina Canton would marry. This Instagram post from Dave Canton uh, would talk about an anniversary um, that they had recently. So they are a happy couple and have seemed to move on. They have dealt with a lot of nonsense due to her ex-husband. And we're happy to see that they have been able to move on with their life. Tom Manzo is a problem. It's pretty clear. It's unclear what has happened with this. This case is still pending, involved with Mine Yellow and uh, Tom Manzo. Now, back to the Pernas. They are all on the street at this point. The only person that is not is John Perna. He continues to serve his prison sentence for the little stunt involved with a beating up um, David Canton. The Pernas are an interesting group. They're obviously a dynasty in the mob world. Now, whether or not they're still active is a question. I don't actually know. I'm not in the mafia, never have claimed to be, and don't really know. But 
if everything is true that what the federal government says, they are still very much active members of what's left of the New Jersey faction of the Lucchese crime family. We could also say that when we look at the future of what the mafia is, most notably in the Lucchese family, I've said before, the three strong families in the mob right now are the Genovese, the Gambino, and the Lucchese crime families. And the Lucchese's are probably the youngest of the groups, right? If you look at the alleged hierarchy of the family, they're all pretty young, given the circumstance. And when I say young, I mean 50s or 60s. The Pernas, if you look at like John Perna, John Perna's in his early 50s. So these guys are still pretty young, given the circumstances. They could be down the road hierarchy material. I guess... It remains to be seen. As always, if you enjoyed this video, and I'll admit there was a lot of names involved with this video. If you enjoy this video, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit the subscribe. If you want to give to the channel, I'd greatly appreciate it. Throw me a super thanks. It means a lot, and it helps with the channel down the road. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week here on The Sit Down.